everyone. Uh, this is kind of an odd little special thing. Uh, I posted on my social media a few days ago that I had managed to get an old 1989 Sega Mega Drive to connect to the internet. Uh, and I thought that it might be interesting considering I'm going to be using uh, this, as you can see, the X-Band service. Uh, I'm going to be using that, or what remains of it, um, for a, an upcoming short film. So I thought I'd give a little bit of background into it and try and make it look a bit more glossier than just with the phone looking like a wang. So, yes, X-Band, uh, as you can see, is currently running on my Sega Mega Drive. For anyone who's into any of the techie stuff, I'll keep it super brief, um, because no one really wants to go into all of that shite. I'm running on a, a PAL Mega Drive, which is basically one from Europe and the UK, uh, and it's been modded to output the US and Japanese games. Uh, at their correct frequencies. You have to set it onto American mode for this to work. This modem only ever came out in America. Um, as you can see from an insert I'm sure I'm sticking in here, uh, the X-Band itself has some really cool red lights on the modem uh, and it matches in perfectly with the look of an actual Sega Mega Drive. It looks really sleek and stylish. I quite like it anyway. You might think it looks like bunk. Uh, but yes, yeah, so I've got myself a wireless controller from is it 8 bit do I got these from? Who is this? No! Retro bit. Retro bit. Very good controllers by Retro bit. So, I'm going to start the modem here. So, as you can see, there's you can have four slots for different players. This is for the Mega Drive specifically, this one. Um, I've only got one player, which is more. Uh, there isn't really, I don't really like any of the profile pictures, so. Uh, even though mine looks kind of a bit like an incel, that's literally because they kind of all look a bit like incels. Uh, <laughs> everyone's trying to be edgy on X-Band uh, back in day. So, now that I'm in, I'm going to have a look at... This challenge doesn't work, uh, you can't yet on the Mega Drive or Genesis, as it were. Uh, you can't actually play online yet, uh, which is one of the cool things you could do with it back in day. Uh, but what I can do is I can show you the other parts. So I've got a playlist here <clears throat> of some people, including Natalie herself. What is with this timing out? It hasn't done this before. Let's try and switch my OSSC over. Give me sink. Give me the kitchen sink. There we go. Right, so as you can see here, I've got some people on here, including Natalie herself. You can go to each of their profiles and click info. Uh, now obviously let me put in info roughly about them uh, basically last online win lose everyone's on zero because there's no games to play yet um and she could have put in a bio like but it just says i'm a new player i don't think anyone can be bothered to type in a whole bio on uh, a mega drive controller i don't blame them i haven't bothered either um but yeah so you can add and remove people and basically it leads you to allows you to instantly dial them once that setup's working so if i go to stats it will show you my points level which is none points needed none next level none i should go and live in a nunnery let's go to the mailbox because the mailbox is the only part that really works um so i'm gonna i haven't updated any of this so far i'll show you how to update it in just a minute but the bandwidth is uh, essentially a newsletter that x-band sent out as you can see here by the date uh the set well it's americanized so i think it's the other way around second of june 2021 could be the 6th of february 2021 uh, i don't understand american americans uh it's not americans is it that's something else completely i don't understand american numerals anyway so welcome it works you're connected to the retro computing dot network x-band server if you go to http colon forward slash forward slash retro computing dot network you'll actually get a website that tells you how to do all this yourself um it's not just me and a small group of nerds well it is but you can nerd too, if you wish. Um, you do need the modem though. X-Band News uh, is essentially a news updating service, very similar in a way to what happens with uh, bandwidth. As you can see here, there's three pages to this one. I can go through these, open beta release, and then if I go to page three, look, <laughs> I'm due to the network, on <laughs> flash. Uh, so yeah, that's me at the top there. I, there's Fred as well, and someone who looks like they've sworn as their name, um, though they may have done that on purpose send an x-mail to say hello so this is where it gets interesting x-mail is essentially it's just email but they've called it x-mail because you know uh, i've got some 
ones here. I'll go to system because it's not a real person. System is basically just a thing that sends. I tried to respond to system, um, and they were down. Everybody, everybody, everybody living now. Everybody, everybody, everybody. Sucks. That wasn't good. Hi me. Welcome to Open Beta of RetroComputing.Network's X-Band server. Your account was successfully created. Have fun. Uh, and you've got reply, delete, connect, write, and return. You can't connect or write with this guy because he doesn't really exist. Uh, but to get my updates, I haven't. Oh, here it goes again. Must be the recording device that's doing it because it, it's been playing seamlessly for like two hours before I started recording. Um, so you click connect. Are you sure you want to connect to X-Band? You will only collect and send in mail and you will not be registered to play. That is fine. So I'm now going to connect. You get this cool little thing with all the uh, circuit boards. Doesn't normally cut out like this. Of course it's going to screw up when I try and record. You know, I, I spent an hour getting the lighting right and focus and, and microphone and and of course it's now it's going to sit there and I've got the projector trying to make it switch. Uh, and of course now is when, uh, for some reason, either my amplifier or my recording device or something like that is going to go, ah, um, ah. Uh, so that's, that's fun times for us. So it's connected. As you can see, it's taking me back to bandwidth. It's updated the date, so it looked like that was the 2nd of June because that's when I last connected. So now it's the 6th of June, as I record this, uh, and it's given me the exact same thing, but it's got the date at the top as the 6th of June. Uh, but that's not the most interesting thing. Have I had... Oh, I haven't... Nobody's messaged me. Okay, so let's write something. I'll write it to someone. The American one, this is weird. As you can see, it's A to type it, B to space, and C to delete. Obviously, we're used to... In common parlance, a B being to delete, so I always end up screwing up. I can send an email. It's a shame, I was hoping someone had emailed me, that's why I left it. I left it uh, essentially dead uh, for any updates before I filmed this. Just freak out, why not? Boo. I don't want to be creepy, but this is probably going to be creepy anyway until the video comes out. And she'll be like, why are you sending me weird messages? <laughs> You have now one message waiting to be sent. It will be sent the next time you connect to X-Band. So, I've now, that's in my, basically in my ready to send. I then connect again. And that will, once it's connected, it will ship that email off to her, to the, her side of the server. And then uh, when she next goes online, it'll be like, oh, you've got an X-Mail. And she can have a look at that. It's a basic email service, really. Well, didn't I make that sound more fun than it really is? Uh... <laughs> Now, to explain X-Band a little bit, um, X-Band has the ability to allow you to play Mega Drive games online, games that weren't designed to play online. Uh, it was a very odd system um, that we only have a... Well, I say we, that people who know what the hell they're doing only have a certain amount of uh, information about. So, uh, part of that is... So, essentially, what would happen is you'd plug in... Um, woo! One message sent. Essentially, you plug in uh, the X-Band modem, and on top of that, you plug in a, a, a game. And it would only be certain games that it would actually work with. For example, the original Mortal Kombat is one of the ones that's available, right? On the Mega Drive and on the um, Super Nintendo. I don't have a Super Nintendo, nor the Super Nintendo modem. Uh, so I can't test that one. Uh, the weird thing is, though, the Super Nintendo modem, you can play online right now uh, on games such as Super Mario Kart. Again, games not designed to play online initially. So what the game did, or what the modem did, it detected what cartridge you had in the slot, and it would basically go online and call for a patch for that game. So you plug in Mortal Kombat, it goes, oh, you want to play Mortal Kombat? It will connect to the internet, go, I need the patch for Mortal Kombat. And on the server end, there would, it would download like a mini patch for the ROM, and it would load the ROM that's been patched. And that patch would basically allow you to do, I think it was, you, you have to go into like the two player mode still, but the second player would be controlled by someone in a completely different place, uh, a la playing online. Uh, it had certain delay issues and stuff like that, but considering that it the service came out in 94, uh, it was pretty advanced, certainly in the fact that it was, that they basically allowed you to play games that were not designed to play online at all, with like zero code in them for that facility allowed them you to be able to sort of commit to that facility and do that anyway okay we're back so we're now switching to the sega saturn 
uh, I have a Japanese Sega Saturn, an early model one, uh, which means that I have a chip in there called a Fenrir. Uh, and anyone who doesn't know what that is, which is probably going to be 100% of you, uh, <laughs> what the Fenrir does is it replaces the CD drive with an SD card reader. So I've now got the entire Sega Saturn library. Uh, legitimately, all the games that I own uh, <laughs> in my Sega Saturn. Uh, and I've got the US modem. Now, the US and the Japanese modem are interchangeable for the Saturn to a certain degree, so long as you have the right patches for the games. Uh, but to load up what I need, I also have another one of those wireless controllers from uh, Retrobit for the Sega Saturn. So what I want to do... Come on, let me in, you bugger. There we go. So when it boots, it gives me a selection of games. Now, what I've done... You can name the games anything you want. I've stuck them at the top of the exclamation marks, so right at the start. Netlink are the American online playable games. As you can see, there's five of them there. Daytona USA, Duke Nukem 3D, Saturn Bomberman, Sega Rally Championship, and Virtual on Cyber Troopers. Uh, the Japanese ones were under the SegaNet brand, though they all used X-Band. So that it doesn't matter really which one you go with. You, you essentially have to patch it to work on a faux X-Band service. Unlike the Genesis and um, the SNES ones, though, this isn't yet connected to anything like Natalie's Genesis and SNES server um, because they run on a slightly different way of running. But it does allow you to play online quite smoothly or relatively smoothly for basically phone dialing um, based on the fact that these had direct phone number dialers built into the software. So you could literally, you, you can't connect and go, right, I want to search up this friend and play with them. But you could just go, oh, I want to call 077 and it would let you dial through. So, yeah, and as you can see, the Japanese had quite a bit more to play with. Battle Cubes, which was a tester, that does not work on the Fenrir, but it does work on hardware. Um, Daytona USA CE, Decathlete, Dragon's Dream, Habitat 2, Pad Nifty, and Habit, no, I don't know what that is. Poyo, Poyo Sun, which is basically uh, anyone who's played Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, uh, that would be basically kind of like that. Puzzle Bubble 3, which is Bubble Bubble for anyone in the UK. Uh, no, puzz it was Puzzle Bubble Buster Move. I think Puzzle Bubble might be Buster Move. In Okay. Um, Saturn Bomberman, Sega Rally Championship again. Uh, there's two internet browsers. There's Sega Worldwide Soccer for all of you <laughs> soccer fans. I hate soccer. Uh, Shadows of the Tusk. Uh, there's Special Disc with Saturn Internet, which is just another browser. Virtual Fighter in Japan had a version of itself which was online playable, and it was the remix version, the better version of the first Virtual Fighter, and then Virtual On again. It doesn't really matter what I select here, to be honest. Uh, let's go with an American one. And what it does is if it detects the modem in the cartridge slot, the Saturn was weird, it had a disk drive, but it also had a cartridge slot at the back, mostly used for RAM expansions and uh, memory cards. But obviously in this case, it's slotted in, it's slotted in a modem. And uh, so now it knows that I'm playing uh, with a modem, so it's gonna boot into a special sub-menu. Now traditional is oh, traditional allows me to dial someone from a friends list. Again, this does not work. Uh, quick link will take me to um, basically the main X band page uh, or men, uh, X band menu to do a one to one dial. And netlink zone, I believe, goes to the netlink internet uh, website, which obviously is long dead. Uh, so if I go to quick link, oh, it's got sound effects. So the browser, the X-Band browser on the Saturn is kind of my favourite one, simply because they've tarted up the animations and it's a little bit nicer in terms of, uh, it's got a bit more gloss to it, basically. Uh, which is understandable since it was, at this point, I think the service was about two years old and they had, uh, you know, significantly more power in a Saturn. So I like this dialing button where you have the two dudes just kicking the crap out of each other. That's, that's so cool. <laughs> So, yeah, again, I can dial some directly. I can wait for someone to dial me. Uh, and I can go through setup on here. Now, the American games have less options. They're a lot more basic. I can turn the music off as well if um, I get annoyed at listening to that. Um, and also, the, one of the things is if you go to wait, what you can do is it will give you this option. Would you like to practice? Because your friends don't like you enough to phone you. Yeah, sure. 
So you say yes, and basically it will play a, a game of Sega Rally, which because that's the game I'm playing. Um, it'll allow me to play Sega Rally to practice while I'm waiting for someone to come along. Uh, and then when somebody dials in, it interrupts what I'm doing and kicks me into a multiplayer sesh. Um, Three, two, one, and go! Let's see if I can do a lap. I actually do have a safe satin steering wheel, but yeah, I'm not setting up for this. Oh, I'm crashing like a burk. Welcome back to the Saturn. Uh, so I'm now going to load up a Japanese game, uh, so I can show you the differences in the menu. The Japanese menu is a lot better. Um, of all of the, uh, out of the two, it's more likely that the Japanese titles will be able to connect to Natalie servers eventually, um, if if it's possible with any of them. This will load up again, but it loads up differently. Rather than loading up to like a weird splash page asking me where the hell I want to go, this will just boot straight into X Band. Um, and like a, a more legit version of X-Band. Again, this is still using the uh, the American modem. Uh, so it seems a lot of the actual dialing, uh, all of the actual software to dial out, is on the disk rather than in the modem, which is a very strange way of doing it. But I suppose it makes sense because that way it's technically um, upgradable as games improve or as they to do more games. The fact it didn't last very long is a different thing altogether, but the idea would be that they could upgrade it as time went on. Uh, so here we go again. Uh, now this isn't obviously, you can see here I've got some, I don't know, wet-headed smeg uh, as my player character here in <laughs> a very nice linen shirt. Uh, and three new players that have no identity and never will. Uh, so yeah, nice green background. Uh, anyone who's seen some of my updates on uh, my ideas for the x short film, you'll uh, probably recognise this splash screen more uh, with the you know the greens and uh, things like that. Uh, but let's go playlist and you see them kicking a crap out of one another. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, challenge doesn't work. If I can try and select it, it will ask me if I want to register. I'll say yeah. Um, and it'll say here, this is a demo build, only supports peer-to-peer, -peer, which is basically dialing someone's number direct. So uh, I, so the player list, you know, I can add people, but they don't really exist, and it's not connecting to anything to actually connect us together, so that's kind of a, a null and void. If you go to stats, <laughs> there's Smeg-headed Fred-headed Joe. So this has Xmail on, as a service uh, included as well, but again, if you try and connect, it will come up with, this is only a demo, so you can't really use it. Um, there are options, there are, I think there are possibilities essentially here for, uh, you know, potential hookups. Um, I mean, the x band service for the Saturn hasn't really been touched by the community since about 2008, I don't think. So it's it's been going a long time, but it's not been modded much past the fact that now we can play it, great, that'll do. And, and that will do. You know, let's be honest, it's not for me to dictate other people's time. But there, I think there might be the possibility of um, modding the ROMs so that they will connect to alternative servers, such as Natalie's server. Um, but that's out of my hands, that's out of my knowledge. I have no freaking clue how I'm going to make that work. I have ideas of how I'm going to use this in a short film. And as, as for projecting it over a face, uh, that's kind of part of my plan. Uh, it's not all to do with projection. I've got a lot of ideas. I'm a mental bee. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me for this odd one-off. Uh, I need to get back to doing a lot more stream-based stuff, but at the moment I'm working a lot of film, uh, and I'll make some updates about those in the coming time. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you soon.